Good evening and welcome to Creatively Speaking. The title of our show tonight is Women Making History in the Arts. And this evening I have three ladies and of course I am the fourth person. I am president of Prince George's Artists Association. Three members who who are going to talk this evening around that theme, our conversation. The first person that I want to have speak is Cynthia York. And Cynthia York, how did you come to join Prince George's Artists Association? Well, I came to join Prince George's Artists Association through my cousin, Laverne Whitley, who is here with us today. Uh, she brought me in kicking and screaming because I had no idea about what I was getting into. But since then, I have grown immensely. Um, Prince George's Artists Association has empowered me to be more of an artist and to extend myself and show my work. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And in fact, you have several items here. Would you like to talk about starting with this beautiful black and white quilt on the table we've used as part of our decoration? It is gorgeous. Well, yes, this is my very, very first quilt. I started quilting in 2000. Um, I st did this quilt for my first grandson. Oh. Um, and of course, this is going to be part of history because it will be his. And I hope that um, once he's 11 now, and he'll be 12 mm -hmm. in September. So I hope that when he becomes a dad, that he will also give it to his children and have them, have him remind them that his grandmother, oh, their grandmother, his mm -hmm. grandmother, <laughs> his grandmother, me, um, yes. made this quilt, it, which will be a part of history. Absolutely, Wonderful. and it's so it's important to pass things down, you know. Mm -hmm. Our, I too am a, am a grandmother, and uh, it's important to leave a legacy other than just that they know that you were their grandparent. Give us, tell us some more about uh, why you've joined our group. And what, well, let me put it this way. Uh, art is a business, and of course you, are seeing that and you are growing in the sense that you're getting yourself positioned so that you can move forward with this business. So where, how do you see yourself in a couple of years? Uh, in a couple of years, I see myself continuing um, teaching. I'm teaching now. Mm -hmm. um, also uh, developing my skill and uh, entering additional shows. I've also won several ribbons since I started with Prince George's Artists Association and putting my work out there yes. um, to be seen and viewed and admired. Um, it's humbling. Um, uh, I, I and it just feels good, doesn't it, to have people admire <laughs> and enjoy yes, it your does. work. It you know? does. It yeah. does. It really does. Thank so, you yeah. so much. We're going to get back to you. Okay. Not, this is not the end. <laughs> <laughs> the next one that I want to introduce is Benita Tabakin Latner, and she is a painter. Benita, give us your story. Well, my story for Prince George's Art Association mm -hmm. or my story before? Start with the Prince George's okay. Artists Association. Okay. <laughs> um, there was someone whose sh who show, art show, I wanted to see very badly in only Maryland. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite certain why, because he is a photographer, he's not a painter. I just felt very pulled to his studio show, his open house. And then my, I, I arrived, mm -hmm. and then there was this woman sitting in his living room. And I listened to what she was saying. Then after people gave her a break, I introduced myself to her and began speaking about art. And that person was Zenobia Rickford. So in the summer of 2008, I joined PGAA, even though I live cross county. Yes. It takes a long time to get there. Short right. time to get home, but a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. And behind us, 
uh, Benita, mm -hmm. there's a piece of your work. Could you talk a little about it? Yes, this work came about uh, because at 32, I was juried to study with a woman, um, Elle uh, Colba de Bois. She's Dutch, and even though she didn't speak hardly any English, she was an excellent teacher. I first began studying with her in a very small group that was juried in, and then privately. I also studied with a, a senior artist, a master artist, who she had taught. However, my work differs because I'm more interested in the colors and how they relate to someone's health and well-being. She studied, and the Hubble uh, has proved her correct that colors do live and move and have certain shapes in our environment. So I applied that to my studies of color for health. And these colors specifically ground, heal, and uplift. So that's what they're doing. They're best for certain um, conditions. Uh, people are referred to me through health professionals. Those are the only people I'll work with because most of us go by what we want um, rather than what's best for us health-wise. So that's why I will only work with that. I also sell these to just regular folks. And some of the work's been commissioned. This is uh, the style I've been branded in, even though I do create in other styles and I even um, create in complete reality, like reality portraits, things like that. Now you used the term branding. Mm -hmm. I think the audience, could you kind of sure. explain what that means? Sure. You have signature styles, which is what you tend to mainly create and develop. And then there's branding. And that's really determined by museums and galleries and by your clients. That style is what you move forward with and you become known by. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. My we'll next see. artist that I want to introduce is E. L. Whitley. Yes. Well, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about you. <clears throat> about me or how I came to be a part of Prince George's Artists Association? Uh, both. Okay. Um, I was at an um, art show, actually. Mm -hmm. And they were featuring a very uh, renowned artist, um, um, can't think of his name at the moment, but anyway, I met a former member of our association, uh, Sharon Burton, mm -hmm. and we were just talking, and it was a lot, most of the people there were gallerists, curators, artists um, from various places in the Washington metropolitan area, and I told them that I was an artist, and at that point, I was budding. I just retired from D.C. public school system, teaching early childhood education for 32 years, and right. decided that after I retired that I was going to get involved with my art, or well, deeper involved with my art. Mm -hmm. And I met Sharon Burden, and she told <coughs> me I needed to talk to Zenobia. And I had no idea who Zenobia was. I couldn't even remember her name. Mm -hmm. uh, but I went home, and Zenobia <laughs> called my home, and we were playing phone tag for a long time mm -hmm. before we, we actually we spoke were. with each other. And uh, we finally touched base, and we met up, and she told me about the organization, told me this is, would be a good uh, launching point for me mm -hmm. as an artist. And it has been. It has been very instrumental in uh, branding, as you say, mm -hmm. um, getting my name out there, <coughs> showing, um, selling work, um, which is what that was the intent when I came into this uh, new career, because this is my new career art. Um, this is how I met Zenobia, and since then I've just been very actively involved in the organization, and I do whatever I can, and I made a little pact with myself that this would be my baby, Prince George's Artists Association, and not deviate in a whole lot of other directions. I think I'm going to stay here, and um, that's how I came to be with Prince George's Artists Association. Well, yours truly. Zenobia Rickford. 
president of Prince George's Artists Association, joined the organization actually in 1994. And at that time, I was still teaching. I'm a secondary uh, art teacher in the District of Columbia. I've retired as a secondary art teacher from the District of Columbia. And I was coming to this organization, to the meetings for years, and finally I was approached to become the president of the organization. And of course, I, I did. And I, my goal as president of the organization is to have the artists understand the importance and the fact that art is a business and you must really have all of your resources in order. You must have your business cards. You must develop a brochure that is attractive and informative. You've got to learn the language of art. You have to be able to talk about your work because when your work is on display and collectors come to see it, they quite often know as much and sometimes more than the artist. And if you want to sell your work, you have to sell yourself. When people believe that you are truly passionate, they look at your work and they see that it's appealing. But what sets, sets you apart is that you can talk about your work. You can go back and, and refer to people that were influences in history. And just be comfortable in your skin talking about your work. And once you do that, your work will move. It is a passion. And behind me is a piece that I created. It's called The Study of Fear. And this piece is an egg tempera. Actually, this is a G clay because I no longer own the original. But an egg tempera is one of the oldest forms of um, creating artwork. And it started in Egypt. And the way it was done is they ground up uh, pastel, what we call pastel. Of course, they didn't call it pastel back then. But you grind it up. And then you use the yolk of an egg as the vehicle to move the colors across the composition. And that is the way this piece was done. And actually, I was in a class when I, I did this piece. And we had to do an emotion. And this is what I created. This is what I created. I'm pausing because I'm trying to think of a good question to ask a, one of the members mm -hmm. sitting here. Uh, Benita, <laughs> yes. tell me how you feel. Do you get the feeling that this person in the, in the composition is fearful? Oh, yes. Why? Definitely. That came across. <laughs> um, the eyes, the hands. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, the definitely. colors, the lack of colors. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And it seems as though she's in a scary place. Yes, it does. You know, because of the background. Yes, lack of colors. Yes, lack of, of colors. It's just all. So she don't really know what's going on. No. Yeah. Right. Absolutely afraid. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> you know, I, I think I was successful with this composition. And we as artists, when we approach, just think, we start with a blank slate, a canvas, working with fabric working with um, ceramics, whatever sculpture. the media is, sculpture. And most of what we do comes from the subconscious. It comes from uh, looking at uh, actual things. It comes from reference materials. But it's not an easy task to put a composition together. We have to understand, artists understand intuitively the elements of design, line, shape, color, texture, value, light and dark. And actually, artists paint light. We create light with our works. Laverne, can you add to that? Do we create light? Yes. Yeah, most of my paintings, we have a lot of light in there. <laughs> <laughs> we have, um, actually, I like doing, um, I'm moving into another 
uh, genre. Um, I'm moving out of landscapes, uh, mm -hmm. surrealistic landsca landscapes into figurative painting. So I'm mm -hmm. doing a lot of people now. I'm just adding that. And actually, for me, I am painting, I like painting positive things. I don't want to paint anything negative. Yes. I think there's a lot too much negative going on in the world as it is right. without me adding to it. Yes. So um, when I'm painting, I, um, it takes me into another world. And it brings light into my world as well. Not mm -hmm. just for others to see, but as I am actually creating, um, my mind is constantly going. Um, colors are constantly moving through my head. Um, I'm mm -hmm. constantly changing what I started out to do. Yes, it's and it changes evolved. into something totally different. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, totally evolving. Um, I was doing a painting just recently of this uh, painting that I have entitled The Warrior. And it was just going to be an abstract painting. Started out abstract. I laid down and I was, my easel was right in front of my couch. So I laid down on, the, on my couch and I looked at the painting. I kept looking at it and looking at it. And all of a sudden, his face appeared. And I'm going oh, like, where, that did, where did you come Bingo. from? Bingo. Yes. Bingo. And I went in and filled it in. And I got this male figure. That just mm -hmm. came, I mean, it just came out it of the work. Out of down. the abstract came the reality. You know, it reminds so. me of a statement Michelangelo was asked of his David uh, by a collector. And he said they were admiring this fabulous uh, piece of sculpture. And they said, well, how did you think about, how did you come to do this piece? He said, all I did was clear away the clutter. That's all. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the David was there. Mm -hmm. And I personally have had that experience. Mm -hmm. I have a piece that is in the collection of, of, a, of another person. And it's called Buena Vista. And this piece is a landscape, it's a water scene. And I had this specialty paper that looked like snake skin. And I looked at this piece of paper and I just started working. And believe it or not, that piece painted itself. Cynthia, how do you feel about how you create your works? Do you ever come up with something uh, like that? I know you're a quilter, which is a whole different bag. I know that. But there are a lot of similarities. Because for one thing, your sense of color is wonderful. And I've always admired that. Mm -hmm. And you have an excellent uh, oh, understanding yes. mm -hmm. of how to place colors and your fabrics. It's amazing how you choose those things. So would you elaborate a little on that? Well, thank you for the compliments, Anobia. You're so welcome. <laughs> um, some of, I have now the whole world knows it. <laughs> They'll be knocking your door down. <laughs> well, I do have an original um, mm -hmm. quilt on display at um, Green Bell Courthouse now. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be up through the end of April. Um, but when I look at um, talking about history, current history, there are several ladies that I do like. I'm a flower person. Yes. Um, and there's uh, two ladies that I particularly like their work. Uh, mm -hmm. Mimi Dietrich, she is that hand applique person's work that I really like, mm -hmm. and um, Ellie Sinkavage. She also does hand applique. Behind mm -hmm. me, uh, you have some hand applique that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to use fabrics of mm -hmm. uh, current fabrics that we have now um, instead of reproduction fabrics. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I like the hand dyed fabrics. Um, they give you a richer color. Um, and with this particular hand applique that I have, behind me. Yes. Um, I enlarged uh, one of their, one of um, Mimi Dietrich's uh, uh, applique blocks. I wanted it larger because I wanted more color. I mm -hmm. wanted uh, to have um, bigger flowers because yes. I'm a flower person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's wonderful. So I want to ask a question, question. too. Yeah. What, um, what inspires you really? 
as a quilter. As a quilter, and and, and in terms and especially of in relationship to our organization. Yeah, and, yeah, and what that? inspires you to to as you can see, this is very detailed. Yes, um, very detailed, and. I know this is your first one, but I've seen more of your work, and it's even more intricate than mm -hmm. this. And I have been with Cynthia on many occasions choosing materials and fabrics, and that yes. in itself is an interesting way that you, that you do yes. that. Yes. And she, I, you talk about it because you keep it in your, in your mind and even what you're working on, uh, because uh, you know you keep whatever colors are there. You keep that in your mind because you don't bring the quilt always with you to the store. No, it's, but you it's know in, it's it's in my mind's eye. That's the best way I can yeah. yes. describe it. Um, right. uh, when when I see flowers, I go to the arboretum and. Uh, right. Sometimes at night the colors are richer <coughs> looking than they are when the sun mm -hmm. is out. Mm -hmm. So when I'm creating my work, I, I want a rich color. So in order to do a rich color, either I can do my hand dyes or mm -hmm. um, I just find a richer color fabric. And you seem to blend them so well. Yes. You know, the way you just <laughs> blend you the, the colors. colors. Um, you blend them so well and um, actually, can you show us one of the quilts that you have um, with you, other than this one? This one is beautiful, but you have some others. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. here's one that has some colors. Oh, that is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, these are chevrons, and it's also called French braid. I, I used Asian fabrics mm -hmm. for this table runner. That's lovely. That is beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's gorgeous. But Nita, mm -hmm. dear, talk a little bit more about how you actually the develop the okay. technique of your okay. piece. Okay, um, this represents like over 120 individual layers of watercolor. Um, this one, actually, I allowed 48 hours of drying time before applying the next one to stabilize it. Since then, I've learned a specific kind of hair dryer uh -oh. uh, causes oh. the nearly the same impact as okay. letting it dry on its own. So you can shorten your time. So I can shorten my time mm -hmm. and it's it's really important to me now because I'm creating so many for people and for shows. Mm -hmm. yes. So I really don't have that kind of time. Right. And I yeah. can't be um, divided among a hundred paintings, you know, Absolutely. working different layers yeah. and working it for like anywhere from a year to three years. It's just, it's very impractical. So I knew I had to go in that direction. What and most of the time now? it works. What are some of the things you're doing now? Okay. What are you, where are you showing? Um, what's coming up? Okay, um, April's a big month for me. I'm teaching uh, two workshops at uh, Plaza Art called Find Your Passion. Um, mm -hmm. Sunday the 15th from 1 to 5. The 15th, of, 15th April? of April. April. Okay. And then again April, um, Sunday the 22nd from 1 to 5. Mm -hmm. Because I've heard so many people say to me, oh, I wish I could be like so-and-so or so-and-so. They just really stay with the course, really stay with the teacher. Yes. And I thought to myself, wait a moment. So I'll ask them questions. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they've never tried anything other than watercolor, they've never tried yeah. anything other than oils. Yes. Uh, you know, so there's, they're limiting themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to classes that you've paid for, and you're not doing work at home to augment the classes you're paying for, and right. supposedly going to, That's true. then my interpretation was, they mm -hmm. haven't found their passion. So, um, Ruth, who's the manager there, has been very cooperative. She, she mm -hmm. even told me, she said, this sounds like fun to me. Okay. So we're going to have lots of different mediums there, and I'm really looking forward to helping people. It could be abstract, it could be reality, it depends on what the person wants. Mm -hmm. They need to bring some photographs or magazine um, pictures with them, so they have something to work from, because I find in teaching that's best and then they'll be creating different grounds to the second class. They're kind of like piggyback together to complete their grounds so that they can take home a gift for themselves. Mm 
because we tend to always be giving gifts to other people rather yes. than to ourselves. So, yeah. That, then also true. in April the 1st through the um, 30th, I was invited to the tower at the Yellow Bar in Glen Echo. Oh, and um, the reception is April 14th, which is a Saturday, from 3.30 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. because I figured that covers most people. And I want to oh, be respective of people who have the Sabbath and keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And there's two religions that do. Yeah. So on Saturday. Yeah. And then later, there's the art demo. I think that's April 29th mm -hmm. or something like, no, April 21st is the art demo at 3.30, okay. 1, 1 to 3.30, and then the 29th is, no, the demo is the 29th. Sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> the 21st is the art talk about color for health. I'll do an overview of that for anyone who's interested. And I'll be there. Um, normally noon to eight o'clock, seven days a week. Well, thank you so much, Benita and Cynthia and E.L. Whitley. I, we, I'm laughing because I really call her Laverne, That's but fine. she likes, this is her artist name, E.L. Whitley, and she likes that. And of course, I'm Zenobia Rickford. Zenobia, I don't think I need anything else because with nope. a name like that, <laughs> you can't forget it. But I thank you so much for joining us. And as you can see, we have a lot of fun in this organization. We are all still learning because you're learning for as long as you're alive. And it's so important to be a part of a group that really gives you a sense of belonging. And it's and helpful because we all can add interesting ideas to help each other. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. <laughs> really How about is. that? Really <laughs> Thanks again yeah. for tuning in and we're looking forward to seeing you again in April. Different show, different people, but the same uh, result and that is that we want to spread the word about Prince George's Artists Association and what we're all about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.